This video looks at calculating equilibrium price and quantity using demand and supply functions. Now, a demand function can be written in one of two ways. We can have the demand function where quantity is the subject of the formula, meaning it is showing a negative, quantity is a negative function of price. Quantity would be the um, independent, the dependent variable of the function. While with an inverse demand function, price is the subject of the formula. Price would be the <clears throat> dependent variable. Price is a negative function of quantity. No matter if you're given a demand function or an inverse demand function, they both represent the law of demand, that there's a negative relationship between price and quantity. Now suppose we are given that price is equal to 300 minus 2Q. Here we are seeing that price is the subject of the formula. Once price is the subject of the formula and the equation shows a negative relationship between price and quantity, meaning when quantity goes up, price will fall, then it represents an inverse demand function. Now, if you're given an inverse demand function, you can come up with the demand function, meaning we can rewrite the equation to make quantity the subject of the formula. This is just some simply simple algebra. How do we make quantity the subject of the formula? We need to get quantity alone on one side of the equation. So the first thing we'll need to do is to get rid of this 300. Now, the easiest way to do that is to take quantity 2q over the equal sign. Why I'm taking 2q over the equal sign is to get it to be positive. Remember, when the variable crosses the equal sign, the sign will change. So when I take over minus 2q, it will now become positive. I will then take the p over. When I take over the positive p, it will become negative p. So I'll have 2q is equal to 300 minus p. But q is still not alone. I need to get rid of this 2 attached to q. To do that, I will divide everything by q. So I'll get q is equal to 300 minus p divided by 2. So q is equal to 150 minus 0.5q. q is now the subject of the formula. Now we have a demand function with Q having a negative relationship, a negative function of P. We are still seeing that as the price rises, it will cause the quantity demanded to fall. Negative relationship still exists. Suppose we are given QD is equal to 100 minus 0.75P. Here now Q is the subject of the formula. Q would be the dependent variable. Q is depending on what happens to P. Once again, you're seeing a negative relationship with the negative sign. As the price rises, the quantity will fall. We can change this into an inverse demand function. We do this by making price the subject of the formula. The first thing I will do is to try to get price to be positive. It's now negative. To get price positive, we carried over the equal sign. Oh dear, I changed the equation. Um, so we'll have 100 minus QD is equal to 0.5P. Uh, so P is now on the other side of the equation. P is now positive. But P is still not alone. To get P alone, I need to divide both sides by 0.5. So I'll divide 100 minus Q divided by 0 0.5. So we'll end up with P is equal to 200 minus 2Q. The inverse demand function. Price is now the subject of the formula. The supply function. Now the supply function has quantity being the subject of the formula. It shows a positive relationship between price and quantity. Quantity is a positive function of price. 
with the inverse supply function, price is the subject of the formula. Price would be a positive function of quantity. If we are given QS is equal to 80 plus 0.25P, this is a demand function. If we are given P is equal to 50 plus 3Q, this would be an inverse supply function because price is the subject. They both represent a supply function. Why? There is a positive relationship between price and quantity. As the price rises, quantity will also rise. Same thing here. As the price rises, quantity will also rise. A positive relationship. We can convert from inverse supply to a supply function and vice versa. Let's try it. So if we're given the inverse supply function of P is equal to 50 plus 3Q, to make it into a supply function, we need to get Q to be the subject of the formula. Ah, I seem to have changed the equation, but let's continue. So I'll have P, I'm going to get quantity alone on one side. So to do that, I have to carry over this 50. So I'll have P minus 50 is equal to 2Q. Q is still not alone. I will now need to divide through by 2. So I'll have P minus 50 divided by 2 to equal to Q. When I divide through by Q, I have 1P divided by 2 to give 0.5P. I have 50 divided by 2 to give 25. The same thing is done with the supply function. I can change it to an inverse supply by making price the subject of the formula. Now once you're given a demand and supply function, how do we find equilibrium? We learned that equilibrium occurs in the market where the demand and supply intersects. So if we're given a demand function and a supply function, we can find equilibrium. Equilibrium will be where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. So equilibrium will occur where the demand function 100 minus 0.75p is set equal to the supply function 80 plus 0.25p. Once we have set demand to be equal to supply, we then solve. In this equation, we will be solving for P, meaning we need to make P the subject. We need to get P alone. So the first step is to put all terms in P together. So I have to get this 0.75P and this 0.25P together. This is done by carrying it over the equal sign. Remember, once a number crosses the equal sign, the sign will change. If it was a negative, like we had 0.75p, once it crosses the equal, it becomes a positive 0.75p. Here we had positive 80. Once it crosses the equal, it becomes negative 80. 100 minus 80 gives 20. 0 0.25 plus 0 0.75p will give 1p. So we have found that the equilibrium price, the price that is found when demand is equal to supply, will be $20. Using this price of $20, we can find the equilibrium quantity. The equilibrium quantity is simply found by substituting the price of 20 into any one of the demand equations. Why can it be any one? Remember in equilibrium, demand is equal to supply. Let's prove it. If I substitute into the demand function, which states that 100 minus 0.75p, Anywhere I see P, I now put the price, 20. So solving, I'll get the quantity to be 85. 
Can we prove it using the supply function? Let's try. If we start with the supply function, which is 80 plus 0.25p, where we see p, we will put $20. And plugging it into your calculator, you should get the same quantity, 85. So we have found the equilibrium price and quantity using the demand function and the supply function. Let us now try to find equilibrium price and quantity if we are given the inverse demand function and the inverse supply function. So we are given price is equal to 300 minus 2Q. This would be the inverse demand. How did I know? There is a negative relationship between price and quantity. When quantity rises, the price will fall. P equal 50 plus 3Q. This represents the inverse supply. How did I know? A positive relationship between price and quantity. How do we solve using the inverse demand and supply? In the same manner. Demand must be equal to supply in equilibrium. So we will simply equate the two functions, the two equations. I will set the equation equal to each other. I will equate P. Once I've equated P, I will then solve for price. Solve for quantity, sorry. So I put the terms in Q together and solve to get the quantity is equal to 50. Once you have found the quantity, you can then substitute into any one of the price equations to get price. I have substituted into both price equations to prove that we will get the same equilibrium price. So the equilibrium price would be 200 and the equilibrium quantity would be 50. The last thing I want to look at, which we will continue when we look at calculating consumer surplus and producer surplus, is the reservation price. Now the buyer's reservation price is the highest price the buyer is willing to pay for the good or service. If you are given an equation, we can find the buyer's reservation price by substituting Q is equal to zero into the demand function and solve for price because this will tell us what price we are willing to pay for buy nothing the highest price i am willing to pay let's try it if we're given a demand equation of qd is equal to 180 minus 5p anywhere i see quantity i will now put zero I will then solve to get the price. I will then solve to get P by itself. So I'll get the price of 36. This price of 36 would be the buyer's reservation price. This would be the maximum price the buyer is willing to pay for the good or service. The seller's reservation price. The seller's reservation price is the lowest price the seller is willing to accept for the good or service. Given a supply function, we find the seller's reservation price by substituting Q is equal to zero in the supply function and solving for price. So given the function QS is equal to minus 18 plus 4P, anywhere I see the quantity I will put zero and solve to get a price of $4.50. $4.50 is the seller's reservation price. This is the lowest price the seller is willing to pay for the good or service. Using the buyer's and the seller's reservation price, we can calculate consumer surplus and producer surplus. Please review the eTutor presentation on calculating consumer surplus and producer surplus. Thank you.